Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's so good to see you guys here in the chat this early in the morning. Today is September 6th, 2023. Thank you for joining me. I see y'all over there throwing shade on that block I did yesterday, wanting to know if I fixed that thing. Of course I did. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Y'all are cute. Of course I fixed it. Yeah. So if you weren't here yesterday, I, uh, oh, let me start. Let me start over. Hi, I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread. Thank you for joining me. And I am in the middle of stitching the uh, seasonal stitchy stars uh, by the, it's a pattern by Lori Holt for the Fat Quarter Shop. And this is a video series to uh, give you some tips and tricks for quilt piecing and to uh, maybe, you know, help you figure out why stuff doesn't fit sometimes. But if you're brand new to quilting, uh, you are very welcome here. If you are a seasoned quilter, you are very welcome here. This is like a little virtual sewing retreat for all of us. So, I have really enjoyed doing this series with you guys. Now, don't worry. When, when we're all finished, there's a lot of more stitching to do. I was talking with my husband yesterday, and I told him, I said, I have no shortage of blocks that need done <laughs> because I do a lot of uh, machine embroidery on my channel, and I work with the Scan and Cut a lot and some software, but the morning is when I sit and do some kind of what I call mindless stitching where I'm just sitting at the machine and doing some piecing on a quilt. So that's that's what this is all about. But well, good morning, everybody. It's great to see all the familiar faces and names and some new ones as well. That's great. One of you said you're from Clay Center. Well, my uh, my mother-in-law is is from Clay Center. She uh, we we put her to rest there back in 2010. So uh, that, that's a wonderful area of the country. My husband's from Manhattan. So Kansas, <laughs> not New York, Kansas, <laughs> the little apple. So today we are stitching the shine block. Let me get my paper to hide the measurements. Very, very common block. Very easy to sew. And the seasonal stitchy stars are just a table runner pattern. They make up a table runner pattern. It finishes at 16 and a half by 79 and a half. And it, they are the same for each season. You just change your colorways. So this is a hard copy pattern or a downloadable pattern. And the links are below in the description box. And it has fabric requirements and pictures on the back. So if you want to source your own fabrics, maybe you want to use up your stash then you can match and get something that looks like what the pattern is. So that's very handy. We are on the seventh block of this and up to this point, where's Tiki Island, Texas? <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> and I'm from here. Let's see. Well, got here as quick as I could. That was a little bitty thing. Let's see. You guys are, oh gosh, it is so good to see you guys. Oh, <laughs> which one of you said that about Joy and, oh, you were just, um, oh, Scotty Dog. Oh, did she talk about that? Yeah, I know. So I've got all of the other blocks we've been working on up here behind me. And um, so here was black number one. See how pretty that is? I will uh, give you guys tips and tricks to be able to get your quarter inch seams up here at the top and how not to tip your points so that everything matches exactly like you want it to in your blocks. And the one, oh, let's see. I won't drag them all out. I've got, I've done that on other videos, but I do want to give you a little tip today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Y'all, there is stuff in the air here in South Texas. So, hey, Lisa. So this is the way when I, let me see. Okay. There's the boo-boo from yesterday. I can tell because I left the little stitches that I picked out. So, so I could prove it to you guys. <laughs> All right. So the boo-boo from yesterday was fixed. Yes, of course. So I like to use a quilter's cut and press just to block 
my blocks. And by blocking it, what I do is I want to make sure this block finishes at nine and a half. It's on the first exit southbound I-45 after you go over the causeway. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll look that up. So I'll put the block when I finish on this. And I like the quilters cut and press because it's got my measurements on here. All right. And if this block is to finish at nine and a half, then what I do is I will, without steam, I'll do what I can to get it to fit to nine and a half and get it straight. And then I will spray it down. I use, I'll use one of these little spray misters, uh, half and half Mary Ellen's best press and water. It works just as well as full strength. Mary Ellen's best press has a fabric relaxer in it. And that helps a lot. If you've got fabric that is cut on a diagonal and it's being difficult. Okay. That will help those fibers to relax and lay down. And then, but I I'll soak it. I'll soak the block and get it fully damp, not dripping, but damp. And then if I don't have that, then I will use the faultless quilters, quilting and crafting spray. This stuff is phenomenal. Okay. Doesn't flake like regular spray starch. And it just is absolutely wonderful. Now, a lot of people can get, um, are sensitive to the Mary Ellen's. There's something in it. I don't know. It doesn't bother me, but it bothers some people. I've heard they get migraines or whatever, but that doesn't happen with this stuff. Okay. So I will spray damp on here. Now I use the Mary Ellen's breast press because it's cheaper than the stuff in the can. <laughs> I do. I like the stuff in the can a lot, but if I'm going to do an all over damp, you know, to make it damp, then what I do is I pin it at nine and a half and I've got pins in here. You guys can see my pins to make sure that that block stays at nine and a half and I let it dry like that. If you've got a piece that's cut on an angle, and it's, it's not all the way over where it should be, then I will hit it with some steam and uh, encourage it to line up where I want it to, okay? Otherwise, I don't use steam when I piece because steam softens fibers, those cotton fibers, and it makes them soft. And just like when you get a massage and you're nice and loosey-goosey, that's exactly what happens to cotton fibers as well. And so I like to leave the cotton fibers with the sizing in them straight from the manufacturer. I don't pre-wash and then go ahead and quilt with them. And that helps me a lot so that the pieces stay where I want them to. So that's another really important part of quilting is to block your blocks when you get done to make sure that, that they stay the way you wanted them to when you, when you finished. All right. I was very surprised when I was at All Brands San Antonio at Lone Star University oh, a couple weeks ago, and I had brand new purple mats. I had a 12 inch and a 24 inch, both of them brand new, just out of the package, brand new. And neither one of them were super sticky. And I was like, what is going on with these? Because I put the fabric pretty side down to cut it the way I normally do on a purple mat. And you guys, it had been so humid in that store. It was very humid in the store. And so humidity has a lot to do with how things work. Well, I live in South Texas. It's very humid down here. Our heat index is always crazy high. And so if you live... In a very humid area, if you're near a coastline, your uh, your fibers in your fabric and the stickiness of your mats, if you've got any of those cutting machines, they vary based it versus somebody who lives in the desert southwest. So uh, just a little tidbit there. That's what I found. I was really surprised. Okay. So on the seasonal stitchy stars block this morning, first thing they want us to do is to draw a line. Um, what we have got... We have 
two A squares. These are alpha bitties. They are an alphabet numbering system from the Fat Quarter Shop. And mine are sticking to my fabric because I hot glued a piece of fusible fleece to the back of my alpha bitties. And I've got them on my project board right here. So this is everything that I need in one thing. So I've got um, two of the fabric A squares, two of the fabric B squares, and one of, let me see, two of fabric C, one of D, and two of fabric E. All right, so re ready to go. And the first thing is to draw a line on the back of both of the fabric B squares, corner to corner, and then they want you to um, sew down that side. Well, as in previous videos, not a fan of that method because it's very easy to have an incorrect quarter inch away from that line. So I'm going to turn the camera down here and point this this way. Maybe get you guys in here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use, this is a Creative Grids quarter inch seam guide. Okay. And I've got a little Fiskars eight inch rotary mat here. All of this is linked below the video. And I'm going to put the seam guide with the center of it corner to corner diagonally. And I'm going to use a friction fine liner marker. This goes away with heat. These are in my Amazon store linked below. And I'm just going to make sure that the, the ruler is corner to corner. And then I'm going to draw a quarter of an inch away. Let me see if I can do this without moving my ruler. And now I have, I don't have to guess where my quarter inch is. I can see exactly where I need to sew on those drawn lines. So that's a much more accurate method. Anytime a pattern tells you to draw a line down the center and sew a quarter of an inch away from your drawn line, uh, I always kind of give a little circumspect on that, and I don't do that. I prefer to sew on a line versus to guess where things are. Because even if you have a good quarter inch foot like I do on this machine, yeah, uh, you, you can definitely wobble around. All right. So now we need to pair up. Let me get my stuff settled back here. So I'm organized. We need to pair these up with a C square. So we'll put them right sides together. This fabric is directional and I am not paying attention to that. I just don't care because it's cute anyway it turns out. And I'm going to sew on the drawn line. This is the brother. Let me get you back up here a little bit. This is the brother PQ 1500. And I'm at a two and a half inch stitch length. I'm sewing with a, uh, a matte poly thread from Connecting Threads. This is what I use, Essential Pro. I've got it linked below from Connecting Threads. Oh, we're we'll talking about bobbins here in a minute. You guys talked about my bobbins yesterday. I'll show you that here in a minute. So now I'm going to sew on the line. I can swing it around. I don't care to do that because it will tug. And when you're sewing on a bias, I don't like tugging. Anything that can torque the fabric out of alignment, I don't like. Oh, I gotta turn on my iron.
Really? You're going to do that to me this early in the morning? Come on. There we go. Sometimes it gets a little attitude. And now I'm just going to cut down the middle. And they want you to press to the dark side. If you're brand new to quilting, your block has a light side and a dark side. And to press to the dark means to take the dark one on top and fold it over so that the seam allowance is laying against the dark side of the block instead of the light. That's the idea. That's generally the rule. It, it doesn't, if, if you end up with a block that you have to press to the light, don't die over it, as Jenny Doan says, it's fine. When it's all said and done in the quilting process, most, most of the time it won't even, you won't even notice it. Let me go back wide here. All right. So I'm ironing with a Cricut mini press. I love this little guy, mostly because it fits in the throat of my embroidery machine. And then I've got two little sewing tools here that are wonderful. And this one has wool. This is a sewing bar, pressing bar. And then this is a clapper. This is a clapper on the bottom as well. And then I have a steady Betty. It's just sitting on top of one of these carts. And this is my little at my machine sewing station. What are you guys talking about? All about the weather. Yeah. CM mats don't work on DX models on the Scanna cut. Yes, that is correct. They, they've got different dots on them. Oh, good. Good morning, my dear. Good morning. <laughs> He's so funny. My husband. He's goofy. All right. Get you guys in here so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So I'm just going to press this down on here and then encourage it to remain where I want it to be. And you get a very nice flat seam. <clears throat> I'm not pressing these seams open because I do not. Uh, I, they've got a nest and they're hard to nest together if they're open. For me, I find that very difficult. Let's see. You've had a hard time getting Amazon to deliver a DX. Huh. Yeah, I know. Oh, y'all know what? I, um, so I went down to the coast. We, we have a little house in Port O'Connor, Texas. And I went down there and I was doing embroidery on my quattro my old brother quattro that machine's probably 2010 2011 it's old right and uh i took the new brother flat magnetic hoop down there the five by seven flat magnetic hoop and it didn't recognize it i'm like it's a brother hoop i use it in the luminaire all the time and I've used it on my NQ3700D over here, my 6x10 machine. But both of these machines are very new. And it did not recognize that flat hoop. So that was interesting that it didn't recognize it. All right. What are you guys doing? You're going through withdrawals. You took your Solaris to the dealer. Oh, no. <laughs> Off to the rescue. That's right. <laughs> oh, Jackie, that will be fun. I'm so glad you're coming with us on the Sew and Sail Cruise. Sew and Sail Cruise 14. If you go to sewandsailcruise.com, I've got it linked below. We are going to uh, have a ball on that. That is um, Juju from Designs by Juju will be there. All right. We need to trim these blocks to three and a half inches square. So I have a three and a half inch square ruler. This came in my creative notion subscription bag. I've got one link below if you need one, but these are awesome. you got to trim these up. I like it when they tell us to make blocks too big and then trim them to size. That always makes me happy, but these, these are pretty close. I don't have anything. I got a couple of dog ears that I could get rid of. Okay. All right. 
So yesterday I had a uh, consultation with a YouTube channel advisor. Y'all, it was brutal. <laughs> it was awful. The channel is not growing as fast as I would, as it used to during COVID, right? And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And he was brutally honest. And um, the content is good. So it's not, it's not that. This one's a little short, y'all. I can't get any more out of that. No blood out of that turnip. And um, we just talked about the difference between um, community, which is you guys. You guys know who I am. And uh, you, you all, you know, when you get a notification that I'm going live or I've got a video out, you're right there. And it, what happens on YouTube is it creates a hockey stick graph where you guys hit it at first. The, the line goes way up. Then it drops down and it does like this. And the, this, this is the group down here that I'm, that I want to reach out to. They're my target audience. And my target audience doesn't know me at all. So I had to chew on that quite a bit last night. I've got a lot of work to do, mostly on the marketing of the channel, the thumbnails and the titles and that kind of stuff. So um, it is, a, YouTube is its own thing. <laughs> I'm, the channel's four and a half years old. I'm just now getting aware. Okay, I, I can do this now. All righty. So we've got that those trimmed to three and a half. Now we need to cut fabric A and fabric E on the diagonal twice. Great. So we have two of these fabric E's. I'm just going to lay them out here. Is this ruler long enough? It is good. I hate cutting fabric on the diagonal twice. All right. So just like I showed before, it's very difficult to know what where the long side is. And usually, okay, we're not sewing on the long side, which is the outside. So what I'll do, is now see I took these apart. Not my idea of a good time of doing this. All right. You guys, if your triangles are, if your squares aren't matching up exactly, don't do them at the same time. They'll be wonky. All right. So I'm going to cut. One. Try not to have a move. If you're sewing that getting to know Hugh, uh, Connie, yeah, you're going to have to really pay attention. All right. So the long sides of these triangles now, they're the outside. So I'm going to put a line on the outside or an X or something to mark it. And what I mean by the long side, the bottom of the triangle here is longer that that's a longer side than this one or this one. Sometimes you're looking at these so much, it's hard to see what's the long side for me. So I mark them so that I don't you that I don't match those up to sew. Yep, that, that getting to know Hugh will make you an expert piecer or it'll become a albatross around your neck. Oh, Marilyn sent me some super cute little acronyms, sewing acronyms yesterday. I'd never heard of a lot of them. I thought they were very funny. So we'll get into those when I can wrap my head around them. I appreciate that, Marilyn. You're a sweetheart. Mark these on the outside so I don't sew on those. Okay. And then I need to fabric. 
E. Yep. What? Fabric A and fabric E. Okay. Fabric A. Good morning. Oh, you guys are so cute. I love that y'all are getting to know each other and visiting. That is so nice. Oh, fail. Dang it. <laughs> My rotary cutter. Really? Oh my goodness sakes, y'all. This is, this is terrible. All right, I, I need a new blade now. Woo. <laughs> it's probably because I'm sitting down. If I was standing up, it'd be different. Right? Mark my long sides. Otherwise, I will try to match these up and I'll be like, how come they don't fit? Yep. Trying to get your house clean enough. Oh. I enjoy going down to the coast, but it seems like all I do when I'm down there is clean. <clears throat> Start laundry right away. Usually when people stay with, there's my dog, Harley. Usually when people stay with us, I have them put their sheets on the washing machine. And then I got to do the laundry as soon as I get down there. It's always something. All right. Now what they want us to do, and this is the confusing thing. Let me put this down. is we need to put, here we go again, y'all. I'm so angrily challenged, like that. Okay, so we're going to, here we go. Okay, this way, yeah, like that. And like that. And that's what we got to sew. Okay. Sometimes I think they don't like me. <laughs> oh. Okay, we're going to sew these together. I can start on that little bitty point, but I don't like to. So I'm going to start on a 90 here, a little bit easier. And then these two go together. So I'm going to set all of these up and then just pull them off the stack. Right. So I need two more of these right here and two more right there. This is what I should have done the first time. As soon as you get the design right, stack them all like that. Right there and right there. Okay. So these two together. I 
I can't believe it's already Wednesday. My goodness. I have a cat audience today, too. Oh, Cheyenne and Thistle are watching. Well, good morning. Kitty, kitty. <laughs> I love cats. I do. Oh. I had cats when I was in the service because I was traveling a lot. And I'd always get two. I made sure I had two cats because they keep each other company. But I could leave on a Monday. If I had to travel, I could leave on a Monday, come home on Thursday or Friday. They were fine in the apartment by themselves back when I was single. Oh, I think I'm out of bobbin. I am. Oh, hush. Okay. So let's talk about my bobbin winder, shall we? You guys were asking about it yesterday. It's called a Hema Pro. This thing's a beast. This is it right here. And I drew, I drew on the top of it. I've got a little arrow showing how it goes. So the thread goes up through this little thing here. I wrap it twice around the spindle, around the uh, tension disc, and then put whatever bobbin size I need. And this piece right here, you know, this little, this little piece right here, this will move back and forth based on the size of the bobbin. So I can, I can wind long arm bobbins if I want to, but I use this mostly for the size L bobbins that are in this machine. And then, so I'll wrap it around the bobbin like 10 times or so, and then bring it around and put the thread under the little spoon here and hit the go button. And y'all, this thing is like a tornado. It's like, whoo, it just takes off. You got to watch it. It doesn't stop all by itself. It doesn't have a sensor. So you got to keep your eye on it, but it'll wind a bobbin in about 10 seconds. I mean, flying fast. So you got to be careful. <laughs> But when I'm going to sit and, and, you know, when I'm out of bobbins, I'm going to put, I, I keep my empties in a little tray right over here. And then I have a little bobbin cup from Missouri Star. And I keep all of my bobbins in there that are loaded. So let me see here. <clears throat> oh, that's dirty in there. I'm not going to stop to clean it right now. I, this machine can take it, y'all. It's it's wonderful. And you know, I had this machine for a long time. For those of you who ever get this one, I got to show you. I had this machine for a long time before I realized that there is a there's a cutter right here for your thread to cut off. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Never knew. It's a great machine. Really, really good for piecing. Very good. Oh, this one was only half done. Yeah, because I ran out of thread. All right. There we go. But I'm all about doing the same thing a whole bunch of times. They taught us that in the military about doing the same thing over and over is more efficient than doing a bunch of different things. I'm like, okay, it works. You talk to your cricket when it beeps. <laughs> I talk to all my machines. It's, they're just like plants. You got they they know you love them and it works well. Yep. So I'm going to clip all these apart, press them open, and then we're going to play puzzles and see which one goes where. 
to make sure that we get our little uh, hourglass blocks we need. Yep. Will I be doing any videos for On Wander Lane? Yeah, I can do that. Uh, but now I do... I do, uh, I do my stuff a lot differently than the average bear. So it's not quilting that I'm going to be doing. Okay. Which way do they say one goes one, they want them both go into the dark. Okay. Um, because I cut my pieces using the scan and cut and where's my trash can. I need it over here to my left. I, you know, I cut my pieces use, using the scan and cut and then I, digitize those pieces. I'm in the middle of making a little pot holder. One of y'all gave me the great idea of putting fall on it because I didn't center the pumpkin. <laughs> so that, I, that's still in the queue for me. I want to make that on Wander Lane quilt, the whole quilt. So if you, you know, the books are full of Wonderful little designs that they're made by Nancy Halverson. I love those, that whole thing. But inside the <clears throat> pattern, there is a quilt block that you can put together and all 12 books, you get, you get the, um, you get those blocks and then you can put the whole quilt together. It's just adorable. I would love to be able to do that put that together. I think that would be awesome. So a friend burned up the motor in her machine from making so many quilts on it. Oh my. Well, now this machine needs oil. It does. You have to, you know, a lot of the, the machines today, like the Luminaire and the NQ 3700D, my little travel machine over here, those are, those gears are made out of plastic and in their heavy duty plastic and they'll hold up great and it's fine. The, this machine is old school, almost industrial, and it's got how you know if it needs oil or not. It's got little holes in the top of the machine. And that hole is there for a purpose. That's for you to be able to put a drop of oil in it every month, depending on how much you sew, right? And I do that. I listen to my machines and this one will tell me, it'll say, mm, I'm feeling a little creaky. Do you mind? And then I'll go ahead and give it a, a drop of oil and it'll smooth out. So these holes are positioned over metal rods to either, or there's a, a, a gasket in there, a metal thing with a where it turns and that oil will drip on there and, and you know, lubricate it. There's, little, there's a hole down here in the bottom too for this one. Two of these holes are for screws for a, uh, a, like a seam guide plate. The other hole is for oil. And the manual tells you to do that. These machines should last forever, but you've got to oil them just like a car. She just pieces and quilts on it. Oh, oh, well, so she <laughs> used it to death. Good for her. Okay. So now I've got to figure out how this is going to go together. Because to me, it seems like they're all the same. And that bothers me. And I know four of these should have had them. Oh, they're right. They're right. They're right. Yay, y'all look at this. Hooray, hooray. All right, so we're gonna nest now. I've got a little needle minder. Usually this is for hand stitchers. I've got a little magnetic needle minder right here. There's a metal something under there and that just sits there and it holds my little pins. So when I nest, we're gonna nest these <laughs> dealers, that's the same thing. So we're gonna take these pieces and we're gonna butt the seams right up to one another and match the edges so I can't feel it's nice and smooth. We're going to match those and I'm going to take a pin 
and I'm going to go at a diagonal from my right down to the left. So in one side of the seam allowance and out the other right there that anchors the seam allowance together that anchors the nest. Okay. And what it also does is it allows me because of the angle of the pin, I can get over, I can get over the stitch line before I have to pull the pin so that the stitch will come down, hop over that nest, hold it together, and then I can pull the pin. And then everybody's happy, I think. That's the idea. Y'all, you're sewing on a bias, don't pull. And if, if the planets aligned, we should have a perfect point match in the middle. Yeah, that's what you're after. And see how it's all wonky bumpy, wanting to pull. See how it kind of cups. Well, we'll have a conversation about that here in a minute. So let me put all these together. This is one of the simplest blocks to make, you guys, but um, you've got to really pay attention. Yes, Lisa names all her machines. Lisa names everything hers. She names her RV. She names her cars. <laughs> That's Betty Boo. That's my quilty buddy, Lisa, you guys. She, she's been on my videos before. She moved away from me. Over to South Carolina. Lisa, what did the, oh yeah, you told me what the plumber said. That's right. Poor Lisa's dealing with the uh, tree roots in her plumbing lines out front. Yeah, you want your points like mine. Well, I've given you all the tools, my friend. Giving you all the tools. Now, I use a quilter select ruler. Um, that improved. Cutting is where it starts. you got to cut them straight, right? So I use a quilter select ruler. I have an 8.5 by 24. That big dog is like $60 for that ruler. It's insane. But my, my cutting accuracy went off the chart. So that's where it starts. All the stuff I've been telling you guys, don't use steam. Now, one of y'all said, um, you hit my video and it pulled up Donna Jordan. Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabric, she used steam. She uses steam quite a bit. But if you notice, she's sewing on batiks a lot, okay? Plus, she's up in the Midwest. I mean, uh, the Great Northwest up there in Oregon or Washington or something. She's around humidity all the time anyway. Batiks are different. They're made with a wax. So they, those fibers are already doing whatever they're going to do, you know? Batiks are great to sew on because... They don't, uh, they don't move around those things. I like it. All right. So this guy, let me point you guys down here so we can get these pressed. I don't know if, so how are we going to put this block together? Let me look. We are not going to be, we're not nesting anything. Okay. All right. So I think I want to press these, this open. I think I do. I think it's going to lay a lot flatter if I press it open. 
I'm sure it will lay a lot flatter. And it's going to be difficult. There. So you, Ruby has a Bernina. No, no. Anyone know where you can go to learn how to move a design to the computer and then move it to the 10 needle? Uh, Ruby, I have got videos out there on, hello, Frito, good morning. My little dog, let me pet her. Hello, good morning, baby. Yeah, you're a good girl. So I've got videos out there to tell you how to download designs, how to unzip files, how to save them to USBs and all of that, how to do those, those, those steps. Cause if you, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure I'm liking this. So check, check that out. So Patsy has a Bernina 790. You're limited with magnetic hoops. Um, does dime not make them for the Bernina? Do I starch my fabric prior to cutting? Sometimes, uh, Sue, sometimes I do. If it's really wrinkled and I need to get it ironed out flat, I'm not entirely sure that opening up was any better than folding to the side. Nope, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fold them to the side because it's easier. You're you have to oh yeah. Um, Lisa's got getting to know Hugh on her long arm. She just she'll roll it on the on the bars and just look at it for a couple of weeks. But she's a custom quilter. Lisa does custom quilting. She doesn't do pantos too often. I mean, she will, but not too often. Only two from Dime. Hmm. I know uh, Joy Bernhardt has Berninas and she has uh, the Solaris. Which preferred starch? Um, so she will embroider on the Solaris and sew on the Bernina, even though the Bernina does embroidery. She just prefers embroidery on the Solaris. I use for starch, I'll do 50-50 Mary Ellen's Best Press and water, distilled water in one of these spray do lollies. And then if you want to buy commercial, I use the faultless quilting and crafting spray, the best on the market. It doesn't flake and it works really well. Okay, there's our hourglass blocks. And they all turned out really good. We've got nice hourglass points in the middle of them. Okay, that's because I pin them the way I pin them. They all turned out really good. And we're back there and I'm gonna put this up. Where's my handle? I, just, I got my camera on the tripod backwards today for some reason. Oh, take a minute here and put my little shoe on. Yeah. Oh, Liz, you're late. Did you bring donuts? <laughs> All right. We are ready to put these blocks together. got a problem here. Hmm. I've only got two of these and the pattern says four. So I've only got enough for two corners instead of four corners. And I'm looking at the cutting instructions and there's a pattern error, I think. 
So on the shine block, and I might be wrong, y'all take a look. It says two of square A and two, yeah, two of square A and two of E. It should say four of square A and four of E. I think, unless I'm lost two in my, no, because that'd be one. Where's the other? Hmm. How did I, did I lose two of these, you guys? Do you guys see them anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Where did those other squares go? How can that be? No, the pattern's right because if I put these two together, I've got one. All right, y'all. Where did those go? Huh, that's interesting. Did I sell them and they disappeared? Yes, they're right here. Whew. <laughs> do you guys ever do that? I know I made these. They were hiding under my machine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You cut with me and you have four. I lost two. I did. Candace, they, they jumped off the back of the machine. I'm like, what happened? That's funny. All right. So we're going to set this up. I'm going to set it on the project board. Let me put these down here. All right. So this goes in the middle. And the block goes with the corner, the color to the outside. Like this. And like this. Like this. And then these guys, the two on the sides, the hourglass goes up and down in the middle row. And on the top, the hourglass goes side to side. There. We want it to look like that. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm going to sew the way I do this is I will. So the way I do this is I will sew all of column two to column one first, and then I'll go back and sew these on over here. So that's how I roll when I do that. Okay, I got to make sure this all fits and it doesn't want to. Am I? All right. You got to trim your hourglasses to three and a half. I skipped that part of the pattern because they don't fit otherwise. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Absolutely. <laughs> the one on the left is wrong. Yeah, well, I'm not there yet. I'll get to it. They're way too big. Way, 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 way too big. Rotary mats are invaluable if you've got to be doing this. And you need a ruler that's the right size and it's got those diagonal markings on it so that you can line up. And you want to make sure you've got these points looking right on there, okay, on all of your corners. And you need a ruler, you need a squaring ruler that's got markings on it like that. So if you want these, these are in the Creative Notions Quilt Shop store. She's got a store site. That's Vicki from Creative Notions Quilt Shop. She does that monthly bag. And if she's got, she might be getting rid of them if she's got any left. I know she was doing a half off, a big half off sale. Kind of scaling back 
on everything that is not the monthly bag. So anyway, we were talking about on Wander Lane and uh, Connecting Threads has a whole batch of new books in of On Wander Lane. And I went ahead and ordered the five that I did not have in my stash all <clears throat> So I'll be, I'm waiting on those to come in. I talked to y'all, but I got to pay attention to what I'm doing here. I don't want to mess up my block. Well, you love your rotary mat. Yeah. Keith had to go get feed for the chickens yesterday and he takes Frito with him when he goes and she loves going in the feed store because everybody pets her. She likes that. And that was fun. She had to go in there. I went to, I went to the grocery store yesterday. Y'all, I bought more grocery store brand products yesterday than I probably ever have. The cost of everything is just crazy. Oh, my goodness. There was a jar of that, I don't know how to say it, R-A-O, Raoul, uh, spaghetti sauce. $6.99, $7 for a jar of spaghetti sauce. Are you crazy? I grabbed that Hunt's big can for $1.98. <laughs> That's nuts. Insane. Fortunately, my grocery chain down here, H-E-B, all of their, their brand stuff is pretty good. All of it's pretty good. Okay. And Lisa, just uh, update, the H-E-B goldfish stars are not as good. <laughs> they didn't pass. <laughs> all right. Now we can sew everything together. So let me set this out here again. These go side to side and these go up and down. Is that correct? Yes. So colors to the outside, up and down in the middle, side to side on the hourglass in the, okay, looks good. Yep, it works. $8.99 in New Jersey. Dang. Really? Ugh. It's enough to make you want to sew your own, right? Uh, sew. <laughs> make your own. <laughs> sew your own. I got sewing on my brain. I mean, it might be really, really that much better than anything else, but I don't want to eat it and then figure that out. And now I don't want to buy anything else. <laughs> $7.99 in South Carolina. Wow. You spent $5 for Miracle Whip. That's crazy, y'all. I mean, literally, we got chickens because of the cost of eggs. Crazy. I had a almost a $400 grocery trip. Now we cook at home all the time, but we don't go out to eat hardly ever. But I haven't had a $400 grocery bill since I can't remember when. And then yesterday the bill was like 180, something like that. 
Check out the price at Fresh Tomatoes. Yeah, it is very good. Oh, if you've got coupons. Okay, yeah. That's helpful. So let's see. I'm going to do. Okay. The way they tell you to fold these. So they want you to fold this one, which is on the top. Fold it inward. Well, I've got more layers of fabric on this side than I do on this side. So it doesn't matter which direction, so long as they nest. And I prefer to fold to the side with the least amount of layers of fabric. It's less bulky that way. Okay. So like on this one, this is the middle. They want you to fold toward the hourglass. But look, the hourglass has all these seams. Okay. Whereas this one doesn't have any seams on it because it's a plain square. So I fold to the direction that has the, the least amount of bulk in the seam. That's just me. So long as they're going opposite directions and you can go ahead and um, get them to nest nice. Yep. Oh, good. Deborah, you've got a good tomato garden. That's awesome. 120 a week. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. That's cutting into my fabric budget. You know, I do not appreciate that. <laughs> right? Don't appreciate that. <sighs> okay, this is looking great. All right. I'm going to put these together. All right. I'm going to nest these seams. I think we'll be okay. Get these nice and straight. You'd rather go without food than fabric. At a girl. That's right. <laughs> That's how we roll. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'll eat ramen, but I'll buy $12 yard fabric. <laughs> Well, at least we can all come here and commiserate with each other in the mornings, right? It is depressing. We just have to get on through, do what we can. All right. Let's see how we did here. Yes. Our quarter inch seams are looking good down at the bottom down there. See that? So you want those points nice. Looking good. Okay. New York strips. Oh, man, that's a deal. Fabric stores are struggling, Marge. It, it's hard. There's no money in fabric. There's really not. Um, where they make their money is machines. I got to tell you, I had a, a nice conversation yesterday with Julie from Two Chicks Quilting down in Ganado. And um, you guys were wonderful to buy the, uh, the fabric kit for the Scarecrow from Designs by Juju from them. She was on her way to Victoria. Um, Karen, who runs the store down in Victoria, Texas, had a couple of bolts. She ran out of shirt fabric. So 
First, she got a, a bolt of fabric from Jean and Port Lavaca, Texas, and Jean was there on Friday and uh, making kits like uh, crazy. And then yesterday, Julie had to drive over to Victoria to go get more fabric. So she got them and they're making more kits as we go. But uh, they're back in stock. She had made six more kits yesterday. And while she was on the road, the other half of two chicks, Nicole, texted her and said, we're out of kits again. <laughs> That's wonderful, y'all. Okay. Here's another reason I'm not a fan of pressing seams open. So where the thread crosses this pressed open seam, I need to put my needle right there. That's the point. Okay. It's hard to see. And I'm going to put my pin, not needle, my pin right there at this point. Put that in and look. If I hold it horizontal, the edges are not even. The edges are not even. So had I done this blind, it doesn't matter that they're not even. What matters is that the points are matching with the pin and the pin is horizontal. That's what matters. Because if you sew it just matching the edges, you're, you're going to tip your points. What Where it really matters that the edges are even are uh, when you start and when you finish. Everything else in the middle, you can work with. Okay. So I'm going... I'm going to anchor that together, hold the pin horizontal in one side of the seam allowance, out the other. And I need my little marking pin. I need to draw my landing strip so I can hit it. And so I'm just going to where that pin is sticking out, I'm drawing myself a landing strip. Okay, then I can pull this pin. So let me do this one here right at the tip. Okay. So it's right at the tip right there. See how that pin is at that tip? And I'm going to go right in on that point right there. Hold the pin horizontally level. Now these edges match up. That other one was being fussy. That's fine. We can deal with that. And now I'm going to go in one side of the seam and out the other to anchor them, draw my little landing strip. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to nest these down here at the bottom. I'm going to nest them, butt them up together and line up the edges. Nice. That one's going to get a horizontal pin and then butt these up up here at the top. It's the outside edges you've got to match to make that nine and a half inch square. That stuff in the middle can be uh, steamed into submission. So even though those edges weren't even, I'm not waving the block at all that this one was a little, it was just odd. I don't know why. The other one underneath it was straight. All right, let's see how we did. There's that one. It's pretty good. And there's that one. Boom. See? So even though these edges were not even right here, I hit it. 
because I anchored those, I anchored those points. See, that's how you do that. All right. Thank you, Connie. Yeah. Look at my edges there. See how they match? Perfect. That's what you're after. That's the goal. Thank you, Lynn. Unconventional, but it works. I don't leave anything to chance. I anchor them with pins because I don't want to do it twice if I don't have to. Okay. All right. We're ready for the last one now. This is our final row, and this is where traditionally I've had boo boos. <laughs> I don't know why. It just is. <laughs> so we'll give it a shot. See how we do here. Really? It would be difficult. Okay. Do the same thing with the pin and the points. Got the same thing going on here. My edges are not even. See that green sticking up over the, the green and the brown are up over the top of the white. Doesn't matter. Keep that pin horizontal in the points. And in one side of the seam allowance and up the other. Draw my landing strip. What is landing? Well, I was in the Air Force <laughs> and airplanes land on landing strips. So I draw a landing strip for my for my sewing machine foot. That's what I call that. Okay. All it is is a target. Nest those together, hold the pin horizontal. Now on this one, this is right. Because even though I can see the point, it's white on white, thread on fabric, and uh, it's hard to, sometimes you can miss it. Don't put your pins in your mouth, y'all. <laughs> I was reading a, uh, I read a lot of uh, historical romance, not that Bridgerton trash. <laughs> I read clean historical Regency romance novels. And um, I like because they go to the modiste quite a bit. So there's a lot of references to sewing and dressmaking in these books. And I like that. And I was reading one and um, the author, of course it's all fiction. I just dropped a pin, but the author talked about how um, the, the helper at the dressmaker had was, you know, telling her to turn around mumbling with pins in her mouth. And I thought that was so funny that she put that in there. Yeah. If y'all uh, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> yep. Can you swallow one? Sure. You're, but don't, right? Okay. Here we go, final, final seam, you guys. There's one, here we go. Okay, let's see how we did. That'll work. 
And that'll work, I think. I think that'll work. See? Uh, Y'all. I'm going to stitch off every single black. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I got it fixed. That, that's unsatisfactory. Oh, my word. Every single block. It's been the last scene where I get to it, and it's like, nope. Not happy with that. I don't know what happened. If I didn't nest it right or what. Erg. I know it's only a stitch off and I know I'm being nitpicky and some of y'all are probably going, I'd keep it, but I'm one of those people, y'all, that will bug me. It will bug me to death. All right, let's do this again. So yesterday when that seam didn't match, y'all, I had to... Um, unpick it again and then do this thing where I sewed, I mean, I matched it exactly. And then what happened, see, this is going to be off again, I think, was I ended up with a bubble. I had too much fabric on one side. So I sewed it so that the points matched exactly, got that matching. And then the other part of it, I flipped the block over and sewed it from the wrong side. On the other side, not, not, not the wrong side, but the other side. And what that did was, is it, it had the feed dogs pull in that bigger fabric from the bottom and it worked. Yeah. Matter of fact, I might do that on this one. Let me sew this from this, this side and see how it goes. I'll cut it out. Let's do it from the opposite direction. Sometimes that helps. And again, I did not unpick the entire seam. I just did that one little part. Everything else is fine. There we go. All right. There we go. Much, much better. That did it. Yep. Okay. You will comply. <laughs> Do as I say. <laughs> Be the boss of the fabric. Okay. Well, this is great. All right. So here is block number seven. I love it. So this is the shine block. This turned out awesome. You're the same. Yeah. To the point you had to make a new rule for yourself at the end of three strikes. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't spend all day on one piece. If you can easily fix it, you should do so. Yes, absolutely. So this is the shine block. So here's block seven. We are going to work on the finishing. I think tomorrow we'll do sashing. So we'll do a whole lot of visiting uh, because I think I'm just going to be sewing straight strips to these blocks and getting them all laid out and doing all kinds of stuff. So Anyway, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. All right. So thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.